The name Smoketown is most often attributed to the smoke that filled the air from the brick kilns which populated the area prior to the 1880s. Between 1865 and 1940, the central part of Smoketown solidified into one of the densest and poorest yet most vibrant African American neighborhoods in Louisville. The House and Projects namesake was Reverend William Henry Shepherd, one of Smoketown's most widely celebrated leaders. Shepherd, a Presbyterian minister, traveled to the Free State of Congo in Central Africa as a missionary in 1890. He became an internationally recognized defender of human rights as he documented Belgian atrocities in the Congo connected with rubber manufacturing. In 1910, he moved to Louisville and became the pastor of Grace Presbyterian Church in 1912, where he worked to improve the Smoketown neighborhood. For the residents, Shepherd Square was the heart of Smoketown. When you think of Smoketown, you think of Shepherd Square. When you think of Shepherd Square, you think of Smoketown. The Shepherd Square public housing complex stemmed from the United States Housing Act of 1937, which established a permanent federal commitment to provide low-income housing for the nation's poor population. The act created the United States Housing Authority that was charged with administering a decentralized public housing program to be run by local authorities such as the Louisville Municipal Housing Authority, later called the Louisville Metro Housing Authority. Best described as functional moderism, the 36 residential buildings which made up Shepherd Square were situated on 16.5 acres in the heart of Smoketown. Shepherd Square and Grace Community Center quickly forged a supportive relationship that many residents define as foundational to the personal success and the neighborhood's family-like environment. My name is Lavelle White, producer and director of More Than Bricks and Mortar Smoketown, A New Beginning. The purpose of this documentary is to discuss the revitalization of the Smoketown community. Even though it's had its struggles before, Smoketown is moving in the right direction to bring about positive change to the metro community. redevelopments of public housing sites also involve you know a lot of private money but you, you gotta you gotta start somewhere and and it starts with government and it should start with government I made my way here after moving through some of the smokiest mines. I always wondered what the North would look like. Halfway expected to be made out of milk and honey the way my daddy talked about it. There is nothing civil about war, my father used to say. And I was just a boy in those days. Son of a sharecropping ex-military man. He said, we're going to create life in the North. Said we was going to some place where we can start over. You see, the war found itself dying on land my family had worked for over a century. But we gonna create life, my mama said. I didn't care. At that age, family was all I did have. But I remember when I first laid eyes on Smoketown. Factories that lined the streets like rows of crops had what looked like gray cotton shooting from the roof. See, I thought that's where they made rain clouds. Sure enough, my daddy found a job in one of the factories. Told me that they made bricks there. 
told me that those bricks was building us a foundation in this city. Said that those bricks gave us food and comfort and shelter. Those bricks took my daddy's life and gave us one at the same time. Now he buried somewhere around here. It's probably where I end up too. I'm really starting to get used to the smell though. Smell like fire and freedom. Smoke Town at, at a point in time presently where we have the opportunity to make Smoke Town a destiny, a neighborhood of choice for folks throughout Jefferson County who are wanting to live, um, you know, in, a, in an urban environment or in, a, in a downtown setting. Of all the districts that, of all the neighborhoods that I have in my uh, council district, I always like Smoke Town the most. You know, they always say you're not supposed to choose if you have kids. One child is not supposed to be your favorite. Same thing is true in council district. You're not going to have one neighborhood that's more, um, that you like more than the others. But I've always said that um, about Smoke Town. And the reason being is, one, I think I've always been drawn to the rich history uh, of Smoke Town and also the pride of former residents that they've had. Smoke Town has had a lot of really, really great, fun memories for me. All I still got is positive memories, straight up, you know what I mean? And, uh, a strong influence, you know what I mean? Smoketown was wonderful. The people were wonderful. It was a friendly community. Anybody that once lived in Smoketown always claimed Smoketown. You look where it is. I mean, it's it's just a stone's throw away from from the areas north of Broadway that encompass the Central Business District, the hospitals. Um, it's a, you know just a, a couple of minutes away from Old Louisville from West Louisville, from U of L, from the Highlands, so it's it's a great location. I think Smoketown's really important to Louisville uh, first and foremost because it's the oldest African American community in the city of Louisville. And history that is that important, uh, I think, deserves a, a place uh, in a city, I think it deserves to be treasured and to be valued, and then also to be carried forward. And uh, so I think that its, it's place in the, the history of not only our city, but of our state is a really, really important one. It's important to us, to our young people, and to us as staff, and to our board, to make sure that whatever we can do to be a partner in making this community feel like community, that we want to be a partner in doing that. Everything in life is a big circle. We all change, we make mistakes, and hopefully learn from them, but I think Smoketown's gonna make some huge changes from, what, 80 years ago to now. Just knocking the buildings was awesome, and seeing the difference to how the neighborhoods are. Because there's been a, a lot of, of, of non-investment, disinvestment for decades in urban areas, and, and, and certainly with public housing sites because the, the public housing sites that we're replacing were built you know in the late 30s early 40s so they're very very old outlived their usefulness we certainly got our money's worth uh, but it's time to replace them and we cr can create better housing and deal with the problems that exist at the public housing sites beginning with the concentration of poverty when I moved here Shepherd Square had already been torn down so there was a lot of just empty spaces around here and didn't see a whole lot of people uh, quite frankly when I first moved here and so what I know about Smoketown I've learned over the course of the last year from a lot of conversations from living in the neighborhood from working in the neighborhood and then helping to get the Smoketown Neighborhood Association started back again I'm a part of that and there's a lot of really uh, wonderful people who've been here all their lives that have given me a proper education on Smoketown's history and its importance uh, to the community. Shut 
can't have a pop because that was a, a stepping stone that was, uh, for the people that want to live in the project. But then later they discovered that maybe we should get a better place so our families can have more privacy. And I think that's why we lost so many people that lived in the Smoketown neighborhood. There are so many amazing houses and structures and people in this neighborhood that nobody was really talking about. It's a really significant visual though to tear like tons of housing down, all those yellow bricks, all that dust, all this construction, and then to, you know, something else rises from it. You want to know what the community, the stakeholders in the community think. And we vetted everything with them. Uh, not only Shepherd residents, but stakeholders like churches. You know, there's a number of churches in all these neighborhoods that need to be involved, and just the existing residents. You know, schools, JCPS had a role. So it's very important that you get the input from the community because in the end, you come up with a much better product and, and a product that's much more well received by the people who actually live. We have a church full of people from all over the city and even Indiana with a number of expertise and the like. And uh, because of that, we have a community of faith that um, has a number of different peoples who come into one place, who bring their time, who bring their talents, who bring their uh, competence and skill, and they bring their resources into one institution or community of faith, and through it, we try to impact the community in a positive way, and I believe we've been very successful at doing that. And uh, that's why I prefer a church that has a kind of a metropolitan feel in the sense that there's diversity there. And even though people don't live in the community, they care about the community. And the community is about the people anyway. And so uh, our church, our community of faith, uh, uh, has been interested in and committed to uh, bringing, coagulating all of our resources and time, talents, and treasure together so that we can make an impact in Smoketown. Uh, for the betterment of the community. Being a youth service provider for the last almost 40 years, um, I've known young people who have grown up in Smoketown over the years. And there's one thing that I know about this neighborhood, and that is that there's some sort of something special here and I've always felt that way, that there is a, a magic to Smoketown that there really isn't in other places. And when we had the opportunity to move here uh, four years ago, we took it because we wanted to make sure that we were in the place where we had done the highest concentration of our work. We, know, we knew that we wanted to be in a neighborhood that was on the move, and we also knew that we wanted to do something special in this neighborhood by building our campus here. I really hope that core Smoketown values and principles can be maintained. I think that um, all the neighbors and all the partners and business owners and nonprofits are going to be really intentional about doing that. Um, I don't think that you can just plop down new housing stock and just hope it works. I think we all have to um, really listen to neighbors and hear what those values are. The biggest core value that they had was community. Everybody looking out for one another, knowing each other, um, welcoming each other, helping each other, supporting each other uh, in what they were doing. But when you don't know your neighbors, you don't have that. This Vision Smoketown thing is really, really important to me because I witnessed right here on this block, right here, one of the largest block parties, anti-bad period, with nothing negative about it. Everything was progressive, informative, and gathering. Smoketown just has a lot of character, a lot of history, and a lot of interest, and, and, uh, and a lot of that has to do with the people, obviously, who lived in Smoketown for many, many years, and, and also its location. The first thing is when somebody wants to come back, it's gotta be safety. 
So that's the number one thing in our community, is safety. So once they feel like everything is safe and people just want to come back that grew up in this neighborhood and want to see new things around the neighborhood, that's going to want to make them come back, like new attractors, new business. You know, they open up new stores around here. What I like about the new Shepherd Square is that it's very quiet up here now and at night, and it's less violence up here, less drugs, and the kids get to come outside and enjoy themselves. Uh, I think it's great what they're doing to the new Shepherd Square. It's, um, it seems like it's bringing more positive people out. It's real positive right now. It's the look of it is good. You know, it's good quality work being done. And, you know, hopefully they'll bring good quality people so they can keep them up. We want it to stay a neighborhood. We don't want it to be commercialized. You know, we don't want it to be um, high tech. You know, we want to keep up with the times and we want new and fresh, you know, things around the community. We want the structures to be restored. You know, we want our houses to be kept up and the yards and, and just the easements you know, to be well maintained, like a good neighborhood, but we still want to be residential. It was cool. Uh, it was similar to other neighborhoods I'd experienced in other cities, and not having any kind of pre-conceived notions about what Smoketown was supposed to be or not, I thought it was great. Everybody was super friendly to me. We had a great time shooting in the class. Uh, it was close to downtown. It was easy to get in and out of uh, and when I would tell other people I'd get you know go out and have dinner with somebody or meet somebody new and tell them where I was they were surprised that I, th I think they were surprised that I like Smoketown so much. Well I started here in 68 I and mean, I've seen a lot of changes um, for the better for the worse and now for the better again. The old dilapidated houses are being torn down uh, they're building new houses, um, the, the projects and everything, they tore down and they're building nice buildings and, you know, and I'm, I'm sure the people that live there like them a whole lot better than what they used to be in. I really don't think any neighborhood's any different from the other. It's about you, the owner, and how much energy and strength in yourself to make your business roll. And if you don't have gojones and strength and belief in yourself it doesn't matter what business it is doesn't matter what neighborhood me sitting back thinking like now my community is gone how is it going to be better? Are they going to just leave it or are they going to rebuild it? Well, in, in, in reality, they had a floor, a floor plan up to rebuild the community, make it bigger and better. There's a lot of things going on in Smoketown that is only going to uh, raise the level of, of its you know, profile as well as bring even more prestige because the economic and the income levels are going to increase. I think that there also needs to be some investment in um, programming and activities um, and leadership from, you know, older members of the community, whether that's adults or, you know, 20-something-year-olds, um, kind of rally the, the kids together to do something. I would like to see them actually bring some of the residents back. You know, you see a person or two here, but out of all the occupants, you know, it's a majority of new faces. To bring it back together, I just think we who care, you know, the ones of us who are still here and still have it in our hearts, that if we can just talk to these people, if we can just reach out some kind of way and, you know, just get them to listen and hear, I think that they would come back together and be willing to, you know, be a part of this neighborhood. I'd like to see more businesses move in. Um, I mean, they don't have to be big businesses, just businesses. I think uh, businesses in a, in a neighborhood kind of stabilize it. Shepherd Square plus Smoketown in general. I heard uh, Councilman Tandy say at the meeting, this, 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 this could be a, a neighborhood of choice. But to make it a neighborhood of choice, you have to make it attractive. 
and to make it attractive, all the emphasis cannot just be on Shepherd Square. It's the neighborhood around Shepherd Square. We have a responsibility to those who came before us. And those who came before us have an opportunity to make new friends and new allies to carry their visions and their concerns forward too. It all begins with dialogue and engagement and that means sitting around the table, sharing a meal together. It's the simple things in life that make a community a community together. I think we have to convince the people that once lived here, if, if you want to come back, uh, sit down and, and come together with some type of great program. There are people who have committed their lives to live in this neighborhood. And now is a time for us as a community to step up and change policies. If they don't work for folks, then change them so that they can work. Because what makes the fabric of this neighborhood rich is the people. Change the people around you. And if you can't change the people around you, then you need to change the people around you. Because there'll be the reason that you're down up. Change the people around you. And if you can't change the people around you, then you need to change the people around you. And then can your life for getting cancer? See, everybody need change in their lifetime. It's up to you if it's 20 nickels or 10 dimes. Won't you try help change your 10 minds? See, for you, every 10 blessings 10 times. And I'm just keeping it 100. You can take it and run with it. Treat it as God and throw it away and be done with it. I'm trying to do it big like Bun did it. Except to you, why and be at one with it. Change the people around you. And if you can't change the people around you, then you need to change the people around you. Cause there'll be the reason that you're down up. Change the people around you. And if you can't change the people around you, then you need to change the people around you. And then can you like quit getting cancer? See, a vision can't teach your eagle how to be an eagle. And the selfish can't show you how to care for other people. Misery, love, company, don't let it recruit ya. Show me your friends, I show you your future. Change is the topic at hand. You got two feet on your own, you should stand. Correct your own path, don't follow the next man. Follow the next man, gon' land you where he land, you understand? Since the juvenile, they had pain like a root canal. Life like a trap house, people moving in and out. Life a lot simpler, thinking what mama doula now. What God is my captain, it's things that I won't go without like food, shelter, and family. He brand me a father who's supposed to be a light to the dead street. A father who's supposed to provide so that his family grew up without mine. So I refuse to be a deadbeat. Change the people around you, and if you can't change the people around you, then you need to change the people around you. Cause there'll be the reason that you're down up. Change the people around you, and if you can't change the people around you, then you need to change the people around you, and then can you like quit getting cancer? You can no longer just swallow everything that's given, including what I'm saying. I want you to research me because I know it's 100% fact. But the reason why I need you to research me as well as everybody else because if you just accept what I say and don't research it, you'll accept the next man. I'm telling you the truth, he might be lying. So you gotta get in the habit of questioning everything. Change the people around you. And if you can't change the people around you, then you need to change the people around you. Cause there'll be the reason that you're down up. Change the people around you, and if you can't change the people around you, then you need to change the people around you, and then can you like quit getting cancer? Change.